Hello everyone, my name is Sam, I'm a GP. Today I'm going to present on a topic called Causes of Constipation. Constipation is a very common presentation to general practice. So it is very important that we have a list of common and uncommon causes in mind when we see patients who present with constipation. So let's begin. The first row shows a list of some common causes of constipation. The first column shows an infective cause. This is known as dysbiosis. Dysbiosis refers to, the, to an imbalance of bacteria in the small intestine and the large intestine, leading to a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO in short. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can be either methane producing bacteria or hydrogen producing bacteria. Methane producing bacteria results in a slowing down of the transit time in the colon, therefore leads to constipation. On the other hand, the overgrowth of hydrogen producing bacteria in the intestine leads to a quickening of the intestinal transit time leading to diarrhea. Next we have got impacted feces as the cause of constipation. Impacted feces refers to hard, dry stool in the colon, which is obstructing the movement of softer, less impacted stool upstream by act acting as a blockage downstream, leading to constipation. Next, we have got drug and purgative abuse as the another cause of constipation. The use of prescription drugs such as opioids, codeine, morphine, pethidine, fentanyl, even heroin has been associated with constipation in patients. In a similar way, the abuse of purgative has been associated with constipation as well. Next, we have got hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is a condition where there is a reduced activity in a thyroid gland, leading to a reduction in the basal metabolic rate. This in turn slows down the intestinal tract, causing constipation and bloating. In the next column, we have got depressive illness. Depression has been shown to be associated with constipation in some patients too. And in the last column, we have got simple constipation where a patient may not be having enough fiber, in particular soluble fiber in their diet, or just simply have a very poor bowel habit where they resist the urge to go to the toilet to open their bowel when the urge for nature calls come. And over time, this habit leads to constipation. And finally, diverticular disease is a, also associated with constipation in people who suffer from this condition. And four uncommon causes, they are more sinister. For example, we have got cancer that happens within the digestive tract. This includes the colon, the rectum, the anus. This causes what we call intrinsic obstruction, where the obstruction happens within the lumen of the digestive tract itself. And finally, external compression from external cancer such as ovarian cancer or lymphoma can act as external or external compression from the outside, blocking the movement of stools within the lumen of the large bowel, causing constipation. So I'd like to take this opportunity to revise this concept again. We only see what we actively look for. We only look for what we know. Therefore, we cannot see what we don't know. So it is very important that we have a list of common and uncommon causes of constipation when we see patients who present with constipation so that we know what to look for and how to look for it. Thank you very much for your attention. If you like my presentation, please kindly subscribe. And this is my disclaimer. Thank you.